Welcome to Board Ghost, a story broadcast with Games as the Engine. If living is a highway, then heaven is a bus stop. Been waiting for a minute there, but has it been forever? Don't agree with me. We believe you're out there. Hungry for stories for shared experiences. We can't see you, can't hear you, yet we'll play for you. This night's offering is a continuation of our game of Rusalka. To learn how we generate game stories playing the game of Rusalka, don't go to the website, because this game is still in development, so we don't have a primer. But Nick Wedig, we want to thank him again for giving us the opportunity to try this game out before he has got it out in the world. It is fantastic, and when it is out, we will let everyone know, because we'll have a primer episode up, we'll probably play it again, and we are rooting for this game. Our humble players, myself, John Holt, with me. Ken Breeze. Iris Explosion. Zalma Zalma. All right. Welcome so back. we have four uh, watery women spirits in a pond near the water. And it is a spooky good time to learn more about where we're at. You should go listen to the previous episode because we're just going to get right into it. So it's still winter. In the middle of the day, the sun is as high as it's going to get, which is not very high. It is weak and obscured by clouds, and the wind is whipping off of the sea. An old woman wrapped in as many shawls as she seems to have. It's as though she's put every article of clothing that she owns on, but she's still shivering visibly, makes her way to the edge of the pond, and she says, O women of the water, Never have I come to you before, for I have known to fear and respect your power. But there has been a great injustice, and I cannot let it abide. I have worked all my life for the little bakery in the town, and my foolish nephew has run it into the ground with his gambling debts, and his women, and his idiocy. My hands are gnarled and cold even in the summer. I cannot fix what he has undone. Please help me restore what he has taken. There's across the black ice comes skittering this rock and it skips across the ice and makes this scratching, scraping kind of sound. The rock lands in this embankment of light snow at the foot of the woman and dashes snow up into the air and It whips around, and this cold, colder cutting through all these layers of clothes, the cold of the grave, as she feels hugged by icy arms. She hears laughter, and this black-eyed face is right next to hers. You're just too cute. (laughs) I want to help. I really do. All of my sisters want to help you. But it's just so difficult to affect young men's fate when they're so far from our pond. I... I think... If, if I can get him here, I think all will be well. If you... If I drag him closer, I think this will all work out. Just let me know and we'll bring him here and we'll... We'll make sure that... These things get turned around. And she squeezes again, and this chill washes through. The, all the last bit of warmth is squeezed out by this, like, hug, and then release. The, the old woman was expecting something like this. She has girded herself against any shocks, but she still shivers violently and finds herself afraid. To... We flash back to a storm raging from, we see from the pool, the 
So like the cameras on the pool, and we yeah, sort of we see, see and we sea. see like a, see the sea. we see a Rasalka rise and watch the storm, and it gets and they raise a hand, and it gets wilder, and we see a ship crashing on the rocks further out that that are hidden these dangerous jagged rocks, and we cut to the ship, and you see men trying to lash the sails together, trying to keep things together as they hit another set of rocks, and the, they go flying, and there's Running across the deck nimbly is a young girl with her wet hair tied back, a white shock in this in this dark night, this lightning flash scene. And she she goes to secure a line and that's and she looks up and that's when lightning strikes the thing and a and a large burly arm kind of throws her aside as the mast explodes and splinters go everywhere and the whole ship just crashes into the water. Debris washes up on the shore shortly thereafter, and the body of a of this young girl of Ayesh washes up as well. A Rusalka comes up to her, and it's it's this shimmering nude figure. It's Natalka, and she reaches down and caresses the cheek, and the girl retches out salt water and coughs, and Natalka looks down at her and says, "You." You will find nothing for you on this shore. Go back. For in this land you will find your death. And the girl passes out. There's a crack in the ice. (laughs) As geysering up, the black seawater gushes, forming a pool. And from out of that crack, the webbed hand of Hank arises, grasping one side and then the other hand grasping the other as she pushes herself out of the sea to arrive on her waist above the ice. She doesn't bring her body fully out. There are a number of seagulls that are flying around, dive bombing where she is to pick off these little crabs and fish that are falling out of her kelp hair. And as she looks over at the woman, her eyes somehow have a spark of recognition as she says, You, my dear, my dear one, this is a nephew of yours. He does not appreciate you. You must renew what you have lost, and I can help you do this. And I will make sure the bakery is prosperous. And I will make sure your nephew's ways are mended. I will make sure that your legacy Secure, but I would ask something in return. And 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 what is what is that? I would ask that once you have gained your heart's desire, your bakery healthy, your kin cured, your name known, you return to us and join us. And as she speaks, that just like this, almost like a prayer. There is this shimmering as we flash back. And we see this old woman, or rather this woman who's in the shawls, but we see her as a young girl, probably 10 or 11. And we see her letting Henka go from the holy place where she is being prepared to be sacrificed since she has repented her sins. She's chained still clean, but this young girl frees her, the same woman who now stands before us. And as Henka flees out into the night, she promises that she will repay this girl somehow. And coming back to the present, Henka's small, salty, black tears coming down her face. Not tears of sorrow, but tears of joy at seeing this person. So all the way on the other side of the pond, where there is a small reflecting pool that is covered over in ice, you see light glint off the ice, and Natalka is there, standing, and she looks so young and so 
healthy and so clean and she glides toward you across the ice, her feet never quite leaving the surface. Skips across some of the chunks of ice shaken loose by uh, her sister's display. She goes and she kneels by you and says, You are hanging on to an old life. Why waste time and thought on this bakery when you can have life anew? This, 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 this is nothing. This is meaningless. Go start a new life. Keep living. Keep going. You can continue on and create something new. And none of this will matter anymore. I am an old woman. How can I possibly start a new life elsewhere? I've lived a life, a life that I have liked, but I can't start over again. I've done that too many times already. Then I can keep you as you want to be. Perfect, frozen, but alive and living. She looks back at the reflecting pool from which she's risen, and we see the jewel box sunk into the depths and we see Natalka as she is now, as we know her now in her ghostly form from a distance coming around the pond we see her spouse and it's been some time since he saw her last they had their, their dinner they they feasted, they celebrated, they toasted, and in the morning everyone woke up to find her gone, and they assumed she had just set off early for her long journey. And they sent letters to the capital, and they sent uh, gifts, and none were returned. And they sent messages, and the king sent back word that she had never arrived. And so they become worried and time passes and they fret and her spouse eventually decides that it is time to make a petition to the women of the water. And so he goes and uh, as payment, he takes her jewels with her. She did not feel that she needed them. She thought she could get finer ones in the capital. So he has hung on to her jewel box and he thought that all he wanted was to know where she was and to know how she was doing, and he thought that this would be payment enough. And as he approaches, he sees her on the other side and runs to her and weeps because he knows that this is where she's been all along. And he doesn't even ask for anything. He holds out the box, and she puts her arms around him and pulls him under. The old woman looks at Natalka. And she says, I appreciate your offer, beautiful one. But as I said before, I have liked my life and I have lived a long, long, difficult and storied life. All I want is for the life that I already lived to have mattered. So I will not be taking your gift that you so generously offered. Uh, Natalka just looks at her with disdain and then falls backward and shatters. And she turns to the other two. And she says, I know enough of the ways of magic to know that if I have my, my nephew brought here, you will drown him. <laughs> but that will not guarantee that my bakery continues to prosper. So, you, yes. with the hair of the ocean, yes, my sweet child. I will accept your offer. I will come back to you once... My, my name is remembered, and my, my legacy is intact, and my nephew is punished. All these things shall be yours. Simply take the seashell in front of you, and when it is time, you will know to return to us. I will see you soon. Yes, my sweet child. We'll meet again. And she, she huddles herself a little bit against the wind. She bends down slowly, creakily, and picks up the shell that she didn't notice was there before, and holds it to her breast and hobbles back to the village. 
We have long memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> New roommate. Yeah. New roommate. Yeah, but she slighted us before <laughs> she scoffed at our offers. I didn't scoff. <laughs> hmm. she... You were you were no fun. <laughs> I mean, I could have taken yours too. I, I could have done both. <laughs> well, there's always an opportunity later. <laughs> You can, awesome. Maybe but, I want to draw on my own nephew, yeah. okay? <laughs> you get exactly what you want. Cool. Only if you come and join us for eternity. Yeah, she, she's she's to. cool with that. She, cool you know, that. she lived a long life. Knowing now that she has this like horrible cult backstory, she escaped that and opened a beautiful bakery. Yeah. And, right. she and got out of it. And her stupid nephew <laughs> like, <laughs> ran it into the ground and now that's going to be fixed. Great. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so it's, I'm, we're gonna have time pass now. Oh yes, this is now the fall, but it's a good decade later. So mm-hmm. a good decade has passed. the The village has become known for its renowned artisans, its renowned bakers and craftspeople. They've kept the secret of this power hidden, but the king has passed. The king passes away, and his queen becomes. The new ruler. The ruler. She is she is now the one in charge of our queendom. And so she she decides that she will do something that she couldn't do with her infirm husband and travel her kingdom and see the wondrous places that where her people come from. When she was a child, she remembers that her parents would would make sure that they tasted all the wondrous things of the world, even if they rarely left the palace. So she wants to go out and explore. She's got a she's got a taste for the world, though she's been sort of a, a hothouse flower up to this point. The village has been given a heads up that they're coming. They've realized that a bunch of flayed scarecrows <laughs> kind of like <laughs> hanging out near the village Ew. is not a good look. So they what? That's our tradition. <laughs> so instead they they sort of erect these totems. They take sea Drift like wood. driftwood, yeah. yeah, and they hollow them and they stuff the bodies oh, inside cool. these they're things. Still they're still there. They're still there. And they're just encased in driftwood now. Look, so it's, it's cool. And it's they, important. <laughs> and they paint them with the tattoos and symbols from all these different lands and leave them there as a decor. The village itself is prosperous. There, you know, again, there are a lot of artisans. There's also this sort of weird group. Ma- manufacturing has become like ah, a big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there. Gutenberg's press has shown up or something like yeah, that. Yeah, this like like things can get are getting made there, but it's like in a non it's industrialization. It, you yeah. just like have these basically there's these warehouses and these workers who are tireless. They just kind of keep they don't seem to nah. need food or They're anything. Odd, weird, Very strange. That's so weird. Strange. <laughs> People. Are they like made of glass, maybe? Uh, mm, possibly. Know. Who knows? But uh, they like making shoes. The graveyard is empty, but the warehouse, but the <laughs> factory is full. <laughs> uh, and so that is where we find ourselves. When... So there's like a more sort of dark smoke coming out from not even the... not that because nope. it's no. clean. They just... I, oh yeah, I guess so. I guess they're just making things. You know? They just making work. Stuff. Super cobbler elves. <laughs> they make cook. They make cookies and trees Keeper all the elves. time. Huh. <laughs> The queen and, his, and her entourage have come to the village and done their thing and being hosted, and it's all very nice and good. And so there's at night there are sounds of partying and feasting from out in the village. And on one of these nights, as we sort of look out towards the village lights, a figure comes stumbling, confused and lost, and looking at the these totems, and they have a confused expression on their face. It's a young woman. She comes up to the edge of the pool... And she looks down at the water, and she looks at the totems, like, looking at them like, something's not right about that. And 
she she looks over the water and goes, I, I, I know this place, but I don't I don't remember it. She's wearing finery, but it's it's definitely of of a, it's like a serving kind of thing. Like she might be a water carrier or something. She holds a an intricate, like beautifully carved little portrait, like a silhouette, and it's beautifully crafted. And she just holds this thing and looks down at it and looks out over the pool. And one of you recognizes her, maybe even recognizes this thing, but she's she's confounded. She she furrows her brows and says, Is is someone out there? Hello? Uh, the pool starts to shimmer and the light almost seems to split in two and the pool becomes filled with two eyes and they look at her and they blink and then they coalesce and she rises. Just her head peeks up from the water and says, My child, are you lost? I, I can't remember. Something, something's missing. Is there something you require? Answers? forgotten something. Well, I suppose I could ask what you've forgotten, but I think that would be pointless. I don't know. Well, I I suppose suppose we could help you remember. Are you seeking vengeance? That's a common one. (laughs) I I don't think so. I think I'm seeking my past. Hmm. And you want to remember? Yes. Why? So, something's missing. I've, I've felt this way for a long time. I've wandered and worked and lived, but I, it feels like I've just been going through the paces, not feel hollow. Something's... Please, something tells me, please. I see that you carry something. Bring, Bring it closer. closer. What is that? Yeah, and she, she holds out this carved curio. Why, that looks very clever. Where did you get such a thing? I I don't know. I I just know that my my employer said it was mine. Do you wish to be able to make more? I don't think so. I don't think there's anything I can do to help you. She looks closer at this visitor and uh, thinks back to her past And she recognizes the doll, and she recognizes it as her brother's work. And she begins to see a resemblance. And she knows that her brother had children of his own with mouths to feed, and perhaps his success made that more difficult. And so she sits back and regards this stranger, who looks quite a bit like family. It's low tide. The sea is out. The Black Sea is out. But autumn, heaped along the sand of the shore are these large collections of rotting seaweed, dead animals. It's, there's a stench that is on the shore, blowing over this entire area. It is somewhat fetid, but not sweet. It, it's, it's salty still, but you, there's just musk in the air. One of these collections of debris shakes itself and throwing off all this muck is Henka as she comes out of the sand like some crab. As she looks over to where her sister is regarding this petitioner, she scoffs. She sees her memories there. She sees her memories. Perhaps I can help you remember who you are. But the best way to learn who you are is to show people something new so that they remind you of what they know of you. Let me help you. Let me help you become part of this place, part of the sea. Let me help you bring powerful weather to this village. Show them what you are not, so they remind you of what you are. As 
Henka is really getting in this idea of like, yeah, elemental powers. I'm going to give you some sick elemental powers. There, the wind is blowing around. She is remembering when she was freed by the young girl and that she crept through the holy place, this cultist compound, this place of misery and terror. And she crept through these stone halls, holding a candlestick as a bludgeon, creeping into the holy man's bedroom, seeing his large form asleep. She hovers over him and brings the candlestick down upon its head once, twice, thrice, and then escapes through a window. The compound is near the ocean, and she is able to get onto a boat, a small boat. It's a stormy sea that night, and as she rows herself away, she sees the light of the lights of the compound coming on. But the thunderstorm is heavy, and her boat is overturned. As she shakes that away, she says once again, Power and unimaginable can be yours. I would also grant you power. Perhaps the answers you seek hide behind locked doors. You hear this voice from underneath the water. The the water ripples. It's like a, like a flashlight, we would say now, or, or like the light under a pool, mm. inside a pool. And it moves and ripples, and Ruslana arises just up to the nose, and she says, You seek answers. Well, something brought you to us, so surely we must be able to help. I will make it so you can pass through walls and doors like mist. Anything hidden behind there will be known to you. There will be no more secrets. Would you like that little one? She is taken aback and furrows her brow again. She doesn't know what to do with these offered gifts. Ruslana has a memory. She's heard whispers. She didn't want to believe them at first. The whispers have become so loud that she must now investigate or risk losing her standing in town. And she goes out to a clearing in the woods. She watches as her husband, with some woman in the town, meet secretly, speak sweet nothings to each other in a way that she and her husband have never spoken to each other. She has this horrible realization that though she has married this man and though she has done everything in her power to maintain the marriage and make everything perfect, and though it has given her so much standing in the town, she's never loved him. She feels nothing watching him with this other woman. This young girl this woman this young woman she she looks at you one to like one by one and so you you will give me nothing nothing and you will give me the storm yes and you will make me like unto the wind like a mist my dear I, you hear the the gears were in her head <laughs> 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 and she says I'll I will take something over nothing. I will, I will take your storm and I will take your mist. With that, yeah. Except it's the pact is, the is pa- lit. The pact mm-hmm. is lit exactly. Yeah, she drops the thing the th- and lightning crackles at her fingertips and she rises into the air. And yeah. The wind whips around her. I also have a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she, like her voice just echoes. As the lightning crashes and light like lights up, like the electricity lights up, you can see that she's part glass, oh. and you can see gears in her, and, and, the, and the thing drops from her hand, and she's a thing anew. Oh, what else? The talk of regards all this conflagration, <laughs> then says, My dear, I will give you nothing. I will not give you memory nor family, but I will take it and flings some of the pond water at her and and with the droplets travels with them onto her. Mm. And until she dies or is driven out of the village, anytime she sees 
herself reflected in anything, maybe even her own hand since she is made of glass, she will see Natalka haunting her. Grandniece, great, grandniece, great, great. She's not entirely sure or even if yeah. this counts, but it counts. Natalka will terrorize her to death <laughs> or yeah. madness. And and she she clutches at her head as because also like within those reflections come some like notions of self but it's like through the lens of mm. your path and mm. truth the worrying of the of what remains of her true mind and this automata that she's been reanimated with and then this other third mind in her head she kind of pulls her hands away and her eyes are just light a blue electricity shoots from them and she just with a wind at her back just flies out over the ocean and you just hear like the storms start to rage and there's a ship there and she flies like clear through it like orbs of electricity shooting off of her frying these sailors hits a powder keg and just blows the ship up you see this explosion <laughs> as this unleashed creature just yeah, flies out into the world i think we just created an x-man <laughs> yeah i was gonna yeah. say i was gonna say we just created a super villain technically the terms are i will haunt her until she dies or is driven out of the village so i think that counts as yeah. driven out of the village yeah, she was pretty quickly driven out of that village so i think i just come back up from the pool the... that was quick <laughs> unless the village is always part of her mm. <laughs> All right. All right. So we rotate. Uh, so you're going to pass time. I am going to pass gonna go time. To... Well, I guess if you're passing time, then Natalka at some point makes her way back. Thirty years go by, like a generation. The village has really become a hotbed of industrial activity. All really still clean, though. Not not like coal burning, not like industrial revolution, like beautiful buildings of glass going stories into the air, almost like tube-like collections that almost look like crystals or crowns. This whole place is seemingly, except for like the ancient places, which are, are kept up, it's been totally modernized. All the houses are made out of these opaque glass panes, except for where you want to see through the glass, of course. It is springtime. A large quay has been built alongside the village so that they can accommodate more trade from the sea lanes that are nearby. Additionally, the totems have had these glass pyramids placed on top of them. So they reflect the light, are meant to keep the evil spirits at bay. Not only the evil spirits, obviously, as the, the totems were, but to entrap any spirits that might make their way towards the village as well. Not just rebuffing them, but actually trapping them in the glass. Or at least that's the idea. Mm. Good luck with that. It, it's like midnight, the witching hour. From the village, we see this well-to-do artisan boldly walking towards the pool she has this curly reddish goldish hair that's in this bun wearing like i said artisan's clothes though more well to do leathers a smock the leather work is really well done uh, etched and in the etchings are all these runes and almost arcane symbols she seems as if she holds to some mysticism. And as she approaches, she calls out confidently, saying, Rasulka, women of the water, women of the sea, I call you. I say the words of ancient power. Come to the shore. Heed my call. Leave the water behind. Are you there? Show yourself. And s just sitting on the edge of the pool, splashing water <laughs> up at her turning her head 180 to look at this woman is Aesh. 
And she smiles, her mouth smile big and wide, and she rolls her head to the side, and she says, Leave here. Why would we want to do that? The woman, the artisan, shivers seeing this very dreadful sight, but seems to steal herself and look at you and say, You do not wish to leave? You wish to stay here forever? This is where we live. What if it could be different? (laughs) How could it be different? I'm surprised that you cannot grasp that there could be more possibilities. Oh, you're but a child. I am not. I'm a woman grown, married. You're throwing a tantrum. Well, I don't like that. She smacks the water. (laughs) She says, you're boring and I don't like you. Just go away. No. Where are your sisters? I'm done with you. Where are the others? They'll They'll show up. And And she she just splashes away. And sprays her in the face, of course. (laughs) Just drenched at this point. (laughs) We flashed to Ayesh, and she's barefoot, bedraggled, and in pretty rough shape. She's she's wearing the tatters of that lace gown. She's travel weary and she's come to the village and begging for a place to stay and she's been turned away. And knowing nowhere else to go, she makes her way to the pond, sees her her sailor there flayed and puts a hand up to him and and that's when Natalka comes to her. She looks at this reflective thing. They don't have to say anything, and Ayes just takes her hand and walks into the water with Natalka. She's tired. They embrace as as they go down into the water. She shouts again, Show yourself! I know there are more! Uh, Don't you understand? They're all dead! They're all dead! So you see what looks like an orb of light swimming just below the surface, just mounding the surface of the water. And it zigzags through the pond and then emerges. Ruslana emerges fully formed in front of you. She says, You're awfully rude. What do you want? Make a clear request so that we may know how we may serve you. Otherwise be gone from this place. I am one of the only ones who is left. And so the rest of them are dead inside. They may create, they create beautiful things, but they are dead. You have power, and it's your power that I seek. I have called you to the shore. I seek, I seek a replacement for my sweet Sophie. We were married, and she became quite ill. We created such beautiful works together. We too, flesh and blood and soul, dreams we had. She is gone, and now I seek a new partner to help me create. You must create another of the automatons that you claim to hate so much to replace your love? You do not understand me. No, indeed I do not. I seek you, one of your sisters. You cannot give me what I wish. You cannot come with me back to the village. You're very sweet, but that that is impossible. I am surprised. Think of the possibilities. Know you every possibility? I will give you a skill instead. It may prove better than what you have in mind, for we are old and we are dead. Your power brings life to the dead. I will grant you that power. No. Take one of these automatons and make that your new love. No, 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 no. I have come here. I have called you and bound you. You will give me what I wish, and I wish one of you. Indeed, I will not, child. And she dives backwards into the pond. The, the water ripples and becomes still much faster than it should. Ruslana remembers being alive, being in love, 
not with her husband, with someone else. Something about this, this girl that's come reminds her. She remembers being in love with a servant in her house, not understanding what it was, not understanding that it was possible to love like this, and so mistaking her feelings for close friendship, brushing her off and, and treating her like a servant, still believing that they could remain friends, even as she treated this servant girl like this. She was mistaken, and she realized that she was mistaken when the girl left to get another job in a bigger town, in a larger house. Ruslana realized that the way she felt was larger than she thought, but also unreciprocated. You start to hear laughter from underneath the surface of the water. And as you bend down, instead of your reflection, you see Natalka. She says, my, my, you are quite demanding. Usually people come in supplication, offering gifts. And here you are just telling, telling us what you want. And apparently what you want is, well, one of us. I have thought. She seems taken aback by the reflection, surprised. As she says, I had thought you respect strength. <laughs> I had thought you respect directness. I will not play games with you, but I know you somehow. You look like them, but there is soul in you. You are not simply glass. I am nothing but a soul. <laughs> You're, You're very rude. rude. But I am intrigued. Then that is a start. I, she bows and says, I honor you. I honor your power. I think, I think you are so beautiful. I think that you, are, you would make a fine artisan. You're, You're quite, quite the flatterer. flatterer. But I will allow myself to be seduced for now. I will go with you, should you desire it. Yes, yes. Please come live with me. Um. Come back to the village. Live in my home. We shall create together. Oh, okay. Let it let slow down. <laughs> and Natalka thinks back. To her daughter. And she remembers her daughter when she was young and how children can be young tyrants sometimes. And she thinks back to how her daughter spoke of wanting to travel, of being excited to visit her mother in the capital of wanting to leave the village, of not wanting to be bound here. And Natalka would laugh and they would talk excitedly about all the things they would do together traveling. Natalka says to you, Fine. You want a companion? I'll be your companion. Yes. I've been so lonely. My heart is broken. My soul Without a companion, there but you, are none in the village. But you must learn that you cannot make demands of one such as I. She holds up her hand to the surface of the water and a looking glass appears. The woman says, if you come with me, there will be no demands, only service. She says, take it as a gift really given. Takes the mirror. And Natalka's in the mirror. Looks at it, like lovingly, and turns from the pool, walking back to and there is no price, per se. This, you of Mintelka will be your friend, will reward you, will sometimes chastise you. <laughs> and she can't leave the mirror, but she will be your companion. It's really sweet, actually. Yeah. It's super sweet. <laughs> yeah. She, take, she takes, she takes, yeah, totally yeah. takes Natalka home and, like, puts her in a place of honor mm -hmm. and, like, carries the mirror around with her wherever she goes, yeah. in the workshop, asking a lot of questions. How? What should we do today? What should we so make? <laughs> oh my God. Like, and everyone in the village is like, wow. What? No, no, no. <laughs> These fuckers don't have souls. Oh, yeah. They don't give a yeah. fuck. Like, they, they're, they may even be a little bit envious, possibly. Yeah, they're very envious. That I have, I, I mean, a replacement for my dead wife. Yeah, and they uh, built yeah. you a replacement, yeah. and you didn't accept it. <laughs> no, I don't want. I don't. I want the true article. One, one who's always nude. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, bonus. it's like a sexy that. FaceTime it's like kind a of sexy situation. Yeah. FaceTime sort of relationship. Yeah, 
<laughs> uh, so I'm not sure what that means for Natalka for the rest of the game, but well, well we're on our last petition. Yeah, here. Oh, oh, I guess that's me. Oh, that's me. So yeah, really so well, it's actually it? kind of perfect. So, so yeah, Natalka and... has left the the pool. Mm-hmm. Some time passes, you have lost a companion, but you've also gained one, and I'm sure good old what's-her-name is settling in. The old, the <laughs> the old, old lady. lady. The I'm old sure. lady. The baker. Yeah, the baker. Uh, and you are, I'm sure, teaching her. Mrs. Baker. Mrs. Baker. <laughs> the ropes. The um, lady baker. Rasalka hood. Yeah, Rasalka hood, and, you know, how to make these cool deals. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wheeling and dealing. Yeah, do that, that monkey's paw kind of logic. <laughs> Uh, Not terribly long passes. At dusk, the sun hasn't quite yet set. It's spring. The flowers and the trees have budded, and the sun is setting, and a cloaked figure makes their way over. They stop at the totems with the glass pyramids, and they make a sign of reverence, and they pull out from a satchel uh, a glass pyramid, and they set it down at the edge of the water, And they say, O Lord, O God, our Father, I wish to cleanse this unholy ground. I wish to banish the unclean spirits who have possessed this town and turned everyone into monstrous creations. I wish to restore this land with your grace and your power, O God. And begins a exorcism ritual with the glass pyramid. Yeah, there's a, a sharp sneeze. And, and another. You just see this lace kerchief. Kind of like, and a... <laughs> as, as someone blowing their nose. And you see with like hollow black eyes weeping and nose dripping. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Sorry. Every spring I'm just so allergic to just so much life in the air. <laughs> Be gone, spirit, I banish thee. I banish thee in the name of the Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. look. <gasps> oh, oh, that was close. So, <laughs> listen. listen. You want s- stuff protected and safe, right? I will listen not to thy temptations. Okay, cool. So, what I'm going to do <laughs> is... I'll, uh... I'll make it so that no one will be able to find this place unless they know a secret ritual. I will hide, I will give you this key so that only you could come here. And that would surely keep the wicked away, right? I wish to banish you, not just seal you, to, to rid rid the world of your uncleanliness, of oh, your... Oh, holy, it were that easy. Holy, it were that easy. I, really, the, it's going to be easy to just, like, dust us under the rug. I think that's the way to go. I think hide this pool away. It's going to be easier than banishing everyone. You're going to run into a lot of trouble from my sisters. And again, another, like, nose blow and a sneeze and she's gone. We flash to Aesh, and she has been raised in the village. This is after she's found on the beach as a young girl after the shipwreck. This was her first time back to the pool. The family that brought her in, their fishing ship ran aground, and their, their business has been failing, and things are really rough. And so the, the man of the, of the house came to the pool and asked of the women of the pool a boon, to, to save his family from, from destitution. And their demand was that they be 
allowed to mark someone in his household and they have to bring and he was forced to bring that person to to them he chose this adopted child in hiding from him in in running from him as he seeks her out and he had to get very drunk to do this to get to to get to the point where he could bring a child to this pool and give it up to these watery monsters he stumbles about and she's frightened and she herself runs to the pool not knowing that this is the place where she would be taken and the Rasulka there, they comfort her and take her fear, but leave their mark. When she is found by the drunken sot, he looks at her and sees the mark and almost like, again, an automata, but not really, not like the ones we've established. <laughs> but he turns around and just marches her off to hand her to his king as a boon, as a, as a trinket, an oddity, and make his fortune. The sand near the petitioner's feet begins to shake as all these sand fleas start hopping up and down. They are just lousy. The sand is lousy with sand fleas during the spring. Lousy? Lousy. Yeah. <laughs> as the sand shakes, a form can be seen, the female form of Henka, as she shakes herself out of the sand like a larger flea. Sand coats her entire body, all her hair of algae, and kelp. As she opens her mouth in a smile, her, her lips are, are thick like a fish's, and there's just these shark teeth as she's looking at this guy with watery eyes. And she croaks, uh, Get out of here. Like, you must. You <laughs> are not welcome here. He holds the, the glass to you, but I abjure thee! Your, Your I banish thee! Appropriations hold no power. You will not succeed. I have the faith of my lord! I know the faith of your lord. And you should be thanking him that I do not rip your eyes from your sockets. I do not feed them with my seagulls. Leave, and I will give you a boon. Leave, and perhaps... Your twisted, sorted life would be a little bit better. He sees, he starts to tremble, and he says, I, I, my, my faith is my shield. With that, a, a sand flea, like, bites him on the, on the ankle. Henka remembers back to her life. She was a mother. She tried to use a, an evil ritual to bring her son's spirit back. She was taken by religious fanatics who imprisoned her and hurt her. She was helped in her escape by a young girl and exacted her revenge on the person who had been tormenting her and escaped again on a rowboat into the sea. But the sea was angry that day, my friends, and her boat was turned over. And as she was drowning, she cried out to this god to save her, Tr cried out to this man's god but nothing came. And so she did what her people had done for centuries. She cried out for the Rusalka. And it was then that mists surrounded her and Ruslana appeared in the ocean and simply pushed Henka's head under the water so that she could turn into the fishy Rusalka she is now. The petitioner is holding his pyramid uh, <laughs> with both hands in front of himself. A mist gathers and pools around his ankles. It rises up, and it rises up between his two arms and between his body and the pyramid. It solidifies into a woman that he is now holding <laughs> in his arms. Yeah. He, he, he drops the pyramid, and he, he leaves back, and he says, Foul seductress, tend me not. <laughs> because he was he was facing away from the water to to look at Hanka, he knows that he cannot back up too much, or else he'll fall right into the pond. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Ruslana says, "Oh, careful!" And she takes him by the shoulder and stops <laughs> him from stepping back. 
with her other hand, she touches his face and she says, It is not an exorcism of this pond that you truly seek, is it? You seek, you seek a confirmation of your faith. I, the, 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 the confirmation I have is the, the, the feeling in my heart of the will of my God and... And yet the evidence of your eyes tells you that spirits, ancient spirits, walk and, and influence the world around you. You would, you would hope that your, that your singular God would be able to get rid of these spirits of this land, but, but it cannot. You, you will, will not find the faith that you seek on this land. Pagan illusions! I will not listen! You will find your faith far across the ocean. Only there can you be free of the spirits of a land as old as this. You must, you must leave, leave, for you will not find your god here. He is useless. I think he looks around at you. Yeah, runs, heads for the hills. It take, takes both of you on your offer. <laughs> <laughs> As he runs, he, he sought faith, and Ruslana remembers the time that she had faith, faith that she was doing the right thing, faith that she was living her life to the fullest. And when that servant woman left her household and she realized that she didn't know herself or what her feelings were. She realized that she had wasted her life pretending to have feelings like she thought she should. Here she was approaching late middle age and she'd done everything right and yet hadn't lived a single day. And that is the day that she went to the pond. So <laughs> as you're running away, uh, <laughs> yep. your life feels like it's going to get better. Things seem Aww. shinier and, and, and maybe better, possibly, yeah, in I the think, future. I think he realized, I think our would-be exorcist realizes that he had a, a brush with something that felt far older and far more real than anything he had experienced in his church, uh, and that shook him. Yeah, mine, and, was, mine was just some pleasant advice. Yeah. <laughs> it was just straight up you will find what you seek across a vast ocean yeah you will i think maybe he goes to do some missionary work yeah, yeah. yeah you you will find no faith here because mm. we've got a we've got an iron lock on <laughs> on this pond here bud yeah he he's i mean if anything he is a believer in something now and mm. he wants to get as far away from it as possible <laughs> smart and the sun rises on the tidal pool and the tide goes in and the tide goes out. Sunset. Rasulka still lives Rasulka. in the pool. That our story ends. We will return again with a new tale to spin to dare to enter. I was one of your players, John Holt. You can find me on Twitter at Lord Joho and on Instagram at board underscore ghost. Ken, where can people find you? You can find me, Ken Breeze, on Instagram and Twitter at Burlings Beard, B-E-R-I-N-G-S Beard. I am a independent RPG content creator and a for hire dungeon master in the New York City area. Check out my website, hire me to run your games if you're looking for someone. Uh, my name is Iris Explosion. I am sometimes the burlesque performer. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Iris Explosion or like my Facebook page. And I am Zelma. You can find me at Z for Zelma on Twitter and Instagram. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks again for coming back on. For yeah. Some more it's yeah. fun. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah of course. Oh, so spooky. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find out more about the 
game and players at boardghost.com. You can follow us on Twitter at boardghostworld. You can subscribe on iTunes, your favorite listening portal. Go leave a review there on iTunes if you could. That helps us kind of get in, up in the rankings so that people can find us. Share the show with people. The more people know about the show, the more they'll know about these stories and about the games that we're playing. And we have a Patreon. You can help collaborate in making the show by going to patreon.com slash boardghost and get access to art, get access to episode halves early, and get access to exclusive how to play videos. And we've got uh, Ken's Adventure mixtape. We probably are close to wrapping up our drawing. So uh, if there might be the last bit of time, if you want to go check that out, uh, you can find yeah. access to it at boardghost.com. Yeah, check out the drawing. It's so good. We have awesome products from some of the friends of the show, Tim Rodriguez, his online fiasco app. Uh, we have an awesome Children of the Fall that you can get from a Gareth great Graham, game yeah. from, yeah, from Gareth Graham. Uh, and then uh, a great product that I'm collaborating on called the Adventure Mixtape, which is four one-shot D&D adventures that are coupled with four musical tracks that you can play with them at the same time. We'd like to thank Pat Couples for our theme song and interlude music. You can find more about Pat at patcouples.tumblr.com or on his band's website, hotelsandhighways.com. If you're not alone in the void, share our stories. The more they are consumed, the truer they become. I don't agree with me. <laughs>